I have ran into a situation where after I watched her go into a seizure at the hospital, we were only been married. Yeah, we've been married about three years and i had been at the hospital with her around the clock um, through a pretty brutal surgery. We spent a lot of surgeries trying to save her legs and I just kept pushing forth and doing the best I could. But when she went into this seizure and I, it was such a horrific experience to watch this, I remember afterwards going out to the hall. It was about three in the morning. I'm still covered with vomit from her and with the nurses I'm trying to hold her down as she's throwing up and everything else. And I see her chart and I'm looking at this chart and I'm thinking, I just start, I, I, I didn't think I was supposed to read it. I thought, you know, that's hands off. I'm not medical personnel, but I, at that point I just didn't care. And I grabbed it and I noticed it was volume four of four. And it was about as thick as the Atlanta phone book uh, when there used to be phone books. I'm not, I'm dating myself at that point. Sure are. And it ended up, <laughs> it ended up growing at that one hospital to volume seven of seven before they converted it to electronic files. And that was just at one hospital. She's been treated at 12. And, and I, and I started reading it and there was a summary at the beginning of every volume. They put a summary of the patient, you know, what brought them to this point. I've actually later on, I would actually write some of those summaries with her surgeon because I have such a historical reference to this thing where a lot of people don't. But as I started reading the summary and I started looking through the notes, by that time I'd had enough exposure to this and I was smart enough to understand what some of these medical terms were meaning. And I remember the tears just falling down my cheeks and hitting the pages of that chart. And I could still, I was drinking stale coffee and I could still smell the vomit on me. And I'm sitting there in the hallway. And not too terribly long ago, we were visiting a friend at that same hospital and I saw that same spot where I was sitting. And I actually stopped for a moment with Gracie. She was in her wheelchair and I stopped for a minute and we, I just got a picture of us together right, right, right at that point. And I think I was thinking, this is not a car accident. This is not somebody who had, just a broken leg and she's going to have a weather vein for the rest of her life. Every time the weather changes, she'll know it. This, this is, this is more than that. This is devastation. And I started to sink, Chuck. I mean, I just, I was sinking because I thought I've got to, I've got to deal with this and the aftermath of this for the very rest of my life. And I felt so unqualified, so unprepared, so, so lost. I felt like I was drowning. And that took me into some dark, dark places for a long time. I, I think if I probably somebody would have probably diagnosed me with depression or who knows what they would have diagnosed me. I was a, Sometimes I was afraid to go and get a diagnosis, Chuck. I was afraid they put me in the ha-ha hotel. And, you know, I, I started going down that path of, of, of despair and darkness. It took me into some very, very bad places where I medicated out inappropriately with moral failures and everything else. So I, I understand this lonely, isolated, heartbreaking place that caregivers can get to. And, and but over the years, and, and we can get into this a little bit later, but over the years, I learned also that you can't push a wheelchair with clenched fist. And when you are eaten up with that much resentment or frustration or or inner rage and, and a lot of times, you know, depression is really just rage turned inward. I've heard that said many times and, and, and I, I, I really kind of concur with that. I think that's a pretty good assessment. But it's, it's, it's impotent fury. I mean, you're, 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 you're absolutely incensed about a situation, but you can't do anything about it. And, and this is where caregivers find themselves. And this is what I'm speaking to. This is what I go out to. This is why I do the radio show. This is why I write books. And I'm writing to myself, Chuck. Make no mistake. I'm not trying to go out there and tell people I got the answers. Listen to me. I'm preaching to myself. I, it's no different than David at Ziklag when, when his own men took up rocks to stone him. And, and everybody had been taken away, all his wife and uh, children and, and, and all their possessions were, were uh, stolen away by the Malachites. And his own men were going to stone him. They had rocks in their hands. And it said, David encouraged himself in the Lord. And I thought that is probably one of the most profound places of Scripture for me, because I realized that even in the midst of such horrific things, I can stop and encourage myself in the Lord. But it's not going to come from within me. It's going to come from me saying out loud these things of God. I had a, a pastor friend of mine who was on my show recently, and he's been a caregiver for over 25 years with his wife with MS. And he said, we, we listen to ourselves way too much and speak to ourselves way too little. And I, boy, I really resonated with that, Chuck. I, I, I felt like that I was listening to my own dark thoughts for so long. But when I started speaking out loud these things of God, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. The, you know, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. For this we know, 
there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus and called according to his purpose. For I am convinced, you know, and Paul would have these litany of things that he would say that uh, where, where he would, his, the bedrock of his faith that he would go through. And when I started seeing that, and then I started seeing it in the hymns of the church and so forth, that was, that was the, um, the rope in the darkness that I clung to. And it started walking me out of these places where I could get on solid land and start catching my breath.